Let's make clear right from the outset that you can stall at any power setting, at any normal airspeed, and in any attitude. Most pilots think of a stall as something that only happens when you slow down your airspeed, like this. But you can also stall like this. High speed, sudden control movement, and stall. A little review of theory will explain the factors involved. Consider this airfoil as the aircraft goes into a glide. The flight path is like this, and the relative wind affecting the wing is like this. The angle between the cord line of the airfoil and the relative wind is the angle of attack. Within limits, if you coordinate changes of attitude with changes in power setting, the angle of attack remains the same, providing the speed remains constant. But any time you change power while holding the attitude constant, the angle of attack changes. And any time you change attitude while maintaining the power setting, the angle of attack changes. Ordinarily, there's no need to think about angle of attack when you fly. You get on perfectly well without drawing diagrams in your head. It's only when the angle of attack becomes quite large that it gets to be a problem. The smoke tunnel lets you see what happens. First, from level flight, we pull up the nose. The angle of attack increases until finally the air can no longer flow smoothly over the wing. This is the critical angle of attack, and the result is reduction in lift, and the aircraft stalls. Now watch. The same thing can happen when you're in a climb. It can happen when you're in a glide. And it can even happen when you're in a dive. For a particular airfoil section, the critical angle of attack is always the same. No matter what the attitude, power, and airspeed, the airfoil will always stall if it reaches the critical angle of attack.